Hey there everybody, Mr. Mark with you, and today I want to talk a little bit about vector components and vectors in two dimensions. Um, we live in a three-dimensional world, and it would be nice if we could pretend that everything was right angles to each other, but unfortunately for us in physics, that's not the case. And so I've got an example up here on the whiteboard. Let me kind of take you through what I've got going on here. I've got a ring, and this is just like a little binder ring like you can use to attach cards together and stuff like that. And then from that ring are three strings. One string is attached to this weight, which is a one kilogram weight, meaning it's got a weight of 9.8 newtons. And then the other two strings are attached to spring scales at the top of my whiteboard. Um, and one spring scale is reading 7.3 newtons, and the other one is reading 4.5 newtons. And I've got arrows drawn behind that. And I'll move everything in just a second when we get to doing some math. Um, to represent both the direction and the magnitude. So that I measure those arrows carefully to scale. And then that yellow line represents horizontal. And so that would be like my x-axis. Put a little x on here for y'all real quick. So that's our x-axis. Now, because the ring is in equilibrium, like it ain't going anywhere, the net force on that ring should be equal to zero. So when I add up these three forces, one is green, one is blue, one is red, they should add up to zero. Well, the first thing you go is, well, 4.5 plus 7.3 plus 9.8 does not equal zero. What's, what, what's up with that? Well, then you realize that the direction matters, and if vectors are in opposite directions, they need to have opposite signs. So maybe you go, well, 4.5 and 7.3 are both going up. So if I add those together and then subtract 9.8, well, does that equal zero? And well, 7.3 plus 4.5 does not equal 9.8. So that doesn't add up to zero. And so the thing that we have to learn today is that that 7.3 Newtons right there is in two directions. It's going up and it's going to the right. And that 4.5 Newtons over there is also going in two directions. It's going up and to the left. So the new trick we're going to learn is how to resolve a vector into components. So I'm going to move this back over here. Kind of set you here and leave you in the capable hands of Mr. Tripod. Let's see if we can get that a little bit higher. Okay, and let's kind of briefly go through some math. So since I've got these arrows drawn behind there, I'm going to move the actual ring itself. And in class, we would actually put a piece of graph paper back there to kind of help us out. So let's see if I can just move that out of the way. Maybe, possibly, or I can just undo these spring scales. Okay, so right now my vector diagram looks like that, where I've got a red force going down a blue force up and to the right, and a green force up and to the left. And again, I got the sizes of all those things. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what this angle is right here. And for that, I'm gonna use a protractor. And so, put my protractor there in the center. That angle looks to be 66 degrees. So that is 66 degrees right there. And then the angle on the other side relative to T2. It looks like it is 48 degrees. Just like all measurements in physics, there is going to be a little bit of error involved. And a lot of it is just due to the thickness of the markers I'm working with. And so in class, you would actually do this with a very, very sharp pencil, as sharp as possible. All right, now, if I have a vector that goes up and to the right at a 66 degree angle, I can break that up into two component vectors. I can break it up into one component that goes just to the right, which I'm gonna call T1 comma X. And then I can add a second one that is perpendicular to that, I call that T1 comma Y. And so if I take that vector that goes up and to the right at a 66 degree angle 
and I create a triangle like this with a vector going to the right and a vector going up, you start and stop at the same place. And so the solid line is equivalent to the addition of the two dashed lines. And so if I can figure out what these dashed lines are using a little bit of trigonometry, then I can ignore that solid line and just work with the two dashed lines. And then things should add up in both directions. So doing some real quick trigonometry, and we're gonna learn how to do this um, in, in the next few days. T1 comma X, the X component, would be 7.3 newtons times the cosine of 66 degrees. T1 comma X then would be 7.3 cosine 66, something like three newtons. I'm gonna round that off to three newtons. And then the Y component, I can use the sine function to do that. And again, if the sine and cosine stuff is not something familiar with, you're, you're familiar with, don't worry, we're going to learn it. And I get like 6.7 when I do that. If you wanted to check yourself, you could do Pythagorean's theorem and do 3 squared plus 6.7 squared, and it should add up to 7.3 squared. And that's kind of a way to check the mathematics. But those are things we're going to review. Right now, I want to kind of focus on the physics. If I do the same thing with the green vector, so I can draw t2 comma x and t2 comma y, and I can do some trigonometry to figure out how big both of those numbers are. So like 4.5 cosine 48 gives me 3 newtons again. And then 4.5 times the sine of 48 gives me 3.3. Okay, so when I say that the net force on that ring has to be equal to zero, that means in both directions of motion, or any direction of motion, really. And so horizontally, in the x direction, the net force has to add up to zero. And in the y direction, the net force has to add up to zero. So both of those have to be true in order for that ring to be in equilibrium. Well, if you look at the y direction, excuse me, the x, let's start there. You'll notice you have three newtons pulling to the left. It doesn't matter if you make that positive or negative and you have three newtons pulling to the right. And so three newtons, one direction, minus three newtons in the other direction, adds up to zero. And so our condition for equilibrium is true in the x direction because the green arrow going just to the left and the blue arrow going just to the left add up to zero. Now let's do the same thing in the y direction. So my net force in the y direction equation would look like I've got a green arrow going up, it's 3.3 .3 newtons. And then I've got a blue arrow going up, so plus 6.7 newtons. Sorry, my marker's coming out. And then a red arrow going down, so minus 9.8 newtons. And so if you now pull out your trusty calculator and you do 3.3 .3 plus 6.7 minus 9.8, you get essentially zero. 0 0.2 this is the exact number that I get. Approximately equals 0.2, which is close enough to zero that we can say for the purposes of this lab, it is zero. And I'm actually pretty shocked I got it to be that good doing this on the whiteboard. With a pencil and a paper back there, you just kind of tape it and then do all this on there. Um, you get very, very good results with that. Um, so realize 0.2 in the Newton scheme of things is, is a negligible amount of error. Very, very small. So that's the thing we're going to be learning. And so if, you, if you're not sure yet what a sine and a cosine is, don't worry. I'm going to teach you. Um, but that's kind of where we're going with all the, the trig that we're going to learn and then vector resolution. 
can we use a little bit of that information then to figure out, for example, how much this weighs? Or how strong does this string need to be if the angles have to be this big? Like if I'm hanging a sign outside my business or something like that. So that's kind of the overview of where we're going with this. Now it's time to start learning some details. So I'll see you then. Ta-ta.